Welcome to the Solid Verbal. The Solid Verbal. Come after me! I'm a man! I'm 40! I've heard so many players say, well, I want to be happy. You want to be happy for a day? Eat a steak. It's that woo woo! And now, Dan and Ty. Right, eh? 3.57 in the afternoon. Somewhere between Minneapolis and Fargo. Hey, Dan. Hey, Ty. How's life? Life is good. Welcome back to the Solid Verbal, to those of you listening along with us, as we are actually in the car. We are. Right now. We are on the road, making about a three and a half hour drive from... Minneapolis, St. Paul, up to Fargo, North Dakota, where we're going to see North Dakota State presumably lose to the Colgate Rangers wow. tomorrow. Wow. Uh, last I heard, the line has come all the way down. Now Colgate's favored by 14. That's like, what it says. Yeah. 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 This has been a very flat drive. It also feels like we've been awake for about 92 hours straight since we were <laughs> up very early this morning. So, okay, let's rewind. So it is about 3 o'clock local time, somewhere between... Minneapolis and Fargo. Very flat. Very, very flat. Extremely flat. Um, and you spent the night at my apartment. I did. Slept on the couch. We got up around 4 a.m. and went to LaGuardia, flew to Minneapolis. We got uh, we got breakfast, brunch with a podcaster friend of ours. It was very good. It was... It was the thickest bacon you and I have ever consumed together. It was, yeah, yeah. It was it was about as thick as Derrick Henry's thighs. Wow. Very, very thick. It's almost like you had that comparison prepared. I didn't, actually. <laughs> this is what the road, the open road, does to me. I like this. I like tie out of PA is something to behold. It is. It is. Um, I want to re- rewind for a second, though. Please. People enjoy a good travel story or a good travel horror story. Uh huh. Can you just give me a good forty-five seconds on what went on next to you on the plane? Oh yeah, the uh, the DMZ was broached. There's a there's an unspoken agreement that the armrests is yeah. a is a nice border setting, and the woman next to me, the armrest went up to like a forty-five degree angle, and there was there was some B on B action there, Ty. Yeah. There was some B on B action. That was not my favorite. You were very uncomfortable with that. Yeah, it was it was just unexpected. Yeah, I like my space. Um, about a three hour flight. We are here, as Ty mentioned, because what started as a being amused by Patriot League football and appreciating it in our own way turned into oh no, Colgate's actually really good, really really good, and then they upset James Madison. You jokingly start tweeting live show from Fargo in all caps. And then, or maybe you texted me that. We alluded to it on the show. More Twitter weirdness ensued with ESPN wanting us to come and telling us we should be on the sidelines, which is not happening. But we talked and we said, you know what? Screw it. Let's go to Fargo. I've never been to Fargo. You've never been to Fargo. No. They have a dome. They do. It's not the Kibbe dome. But no. <laughs> it's a dull. And we should be there in a couple of hours. The plan tonight is to meet up with the the pals we have at ESPN covering the game. And we're going to go curling? Curling. Allegedly. We'll see if it actually yeah. happens. I've never been curling. Do we have the apparel to go curling. Absolutely, we don't. No. Have you been curling? Have you been no. to a curling rink? I've played shuffleboard and I've been to an ice rink. Right. Never doing both at the same time. Okay. I am definitely not somebody with curling experience. Um, And we're just going to see how we do. My guess is poorly, but in an entertaining way. Also, potentially tearing our groins. Yeah, well, I mean, that's always on the table. Right. Um, And then we're going to wake up early tomorrow morning. We're going to go tailgate in 11 degree weather. We're going to take an uncomfortable picture with short sleeves and nothing else on. Right. We're going to porky pick it. Right. Um, and then we're going to go in for some good old-fashioned college football and watch the Raiders and the Bison play. Can I just interject for one moment? I'm ready. We were just passed by a gentleman with a North Dakota license plate driving what appears to be a Subaru Outback wearing a cowboy hat. That's great. Wearing a cowboy hat. That feels which very is, Minnesota. We've, we've, we're not in North Dakota yet, but he is headed where we're headed. Yep. And it feels very on brand. Subarus are bigger 
than I would have figured in terms of popularity. But I think it's the all-wheel drive or the four-wheel drive. It's a versatile, smart vehicle, Dan. The Korean, Australian, I know they have a, an Outback model. I'm not gonna look it up. I'm just going to assume Australian because of the Outback. Yeah. So it's pretty flat. It's pretty gray, pretty brown, some snow on the ground. Yeah. But I'm pumped for some upper Midwest, upper plains football. So what is the plan here? We're gonna file a couple of these audio logs that we're gonna eventually stitch together. Yeah. So that people listening at home, the people who don't live in the Minneapolis or Fargo area, mm -hmm. can kind of ride along with us and experience this uh, as we do, because as Dan said, we don't really have any familiarity with the upper plains. I think that's right. And uh, so we're gonna try and do this chronologically and give people the full experience, even if you're unable to be here with us in person. Yeah, people were very happy that we were actually making the trek to Fargo, so why not virtually take them with us? That's my thinking. If I haven't already mentioned, it is extremely flat <laughs> at the current moment. You can see for what appears to be just limitless miles here. Yeah, I see Brian Harson looking yeah. west. I see, <laughs> I see Brian. He's just chilling, just getting ready for the, what are they, in the Vegas Bowl? No. Sure. They're in some other bowl game. Sure. I think it's Fresno State and Arizona State. So, yeah, so far, I, I enthusiastic thumbs up to Minneapolis. Big time. Yeah. Excited Very to get back there. Minneapolis. Yeah, excited to get back tomorrow um, as you're listening to this Sunday or beyond Sunday. Please know if anything happens to us, our dying wish is that you know that we seem to appreciate the city of the municipality <laughs> of Minneapolis. That's all. That's all I got, Dan. Until next time. Friday, 10.05 p.m. And we're back, Dan, uh, <laughs> from curling. Curling, yeah. It's, so it's, as you now know, it's 10.05 p.m. Right. On, I have lost track of the day. I it's think Friday? it's still Friday. Okay, it's Friday. We're back in the hotel room. I'm we're drinking decaffeinated green tea to keep the instrument lubricated. I didn't even think about that. Good job by you. Um, we arrived at five. We listen. I'm going to be real. Listen. listen. Oh, God. Oh, it amuses me. It does. Uh, I took like a 25 minute nap. You got to see me tell Siri to wake me up in 25 mm -hmm. minutes. Yeah. Really and you good. have the is it the Australian or the British British? Siri? I have a yeah. British Siri. Right. He's great. Um, and then we got a burger at a place called Pounds. Pounds. Pretty good. Not bad. I, I liked your description. Good. Dan's description of the burger place was uh, the burger tastes like uh, the burgers you get at a friend's house who just happens to be very skilled at grilling a, really a burger. really good burger friend. Yeah. So it wasn't like a gourmet anything. No, it was but who just, cares? It was just like a it really- was a, It was a good burger. A good picnic burger. Yeah. Um, and then we met up with the ESPN crew that is calling the game tomorrow happening in- 13 hours, which was Kevin Brown, who started this whole... Not the Dodger pitcher, right? No. I, you know what? Maybe. He has the build. He does. Um, Kevin Brown, DJ Shockley, Georgia great, Georgia all-timer, and Cole Kublik, Auburn participant. Uh, no, Auburn all-timer as well. We love Cole. Um, we went curling at a local club about 15 minutes away, a curling club, because that's the kind of thing that I mean, exists in Fargo, North we Dakota. We are in Fargo, North Dakota. As it should. And I had a blast. I was not very good. If you go on the Solid Verbal Instagram, I, I mean, I don't know when you're listening to this, but at some point, if you... Oh, I've got it archived. Don't oh, worry. you have it you're archived. Good. Okay, you're, good. You are preserved. Good. I'm glad. Cryogenically. Um, we split into teams and we, well, we learned to curl, which is very difficult. If There's a stone with a handle. Right. And you're supposed to, one, one of your shoes has like a, it's a slick bottom. Right. The other one is gripped bottom. And you sort of slide and release. And two other people, I just burped up some almonds, um, will will brush, will broom, will sweep for right. you. It's very, it's, it, people know what curling is. I don't need to explain I, it. No, I think, I think our audience is familiar. Yeah. I So my position, are they position, my role? Yeah, you were what, My skip? job, I was the skip. Yeah. And I put that on the Instagram feed as well. Uh -huh. um, that job, as I understand it, mm -hmm. is to just yell at the top of your lungs. And I was talking with DJ. Mm -hmm. 
because yeah. he, he first also, name basis. he was that's right he was a rival skip uh-huh so it was a bit contentious but um neither one of us really knew what to yell so we were just yelling as loudly as we could mm-hmm. and that's part of the reason why i now have to drink this tea before i go to bed so that i can talk tomorrow when we actually meet the people i don't think you're a natural skip I, I did not hear you as I was sweeping. I thought you were like well, a Fred if, Hoiberg. No, okay, in fairness, yeah. the the instructor... Yeah, he was yelling over you. That was a test. Guy. Well, it was a test. Yeah. But I failed the test, the initial test. Now, the next the next few times yeah. then, I tried to be a little bit more assertive. You were better. But I didn't. again, I didn't know what I was yelling. You lost the locker room early. You really did. Um, and that's okay, because I thought you were more of a natural deliverer. Which is the person who glides the stone if, forward. If if I would have had maybe five more runs at yeah. delivering the stone, mm-hmm. I th- I think I could have been at least. Uh, I'm trying to think of what caliber I'd be. Yeah. <laughs> um, at you'd be, least you, you'd be underwhelming. I'd be at least underwhelming caliber. Yeah. Yeah. Give me your impressions of Fargo. So we haven't been to the NDSU campus. We have not seen the Fargo Dome. We're going bright and early to tailgate. And friend, it is going to be it is nine be. degrees Green. when we get there. Yeah. I did the math. I hadn't realized. Like, oh yeah, we got a twelve Eastern kickoff. That's eleven a.m. here. Yeah, no. So we're going to show up a couple hours early and get some some tailgating, wandering in. It'll be single-ish digits, which will be yeah. a new no, tailgating, be, yeah, experience it's for be me. Extreme tailgating. Uh, impressions of, of Fargo. Of Fargo, thus far. So we're staying in downtown Fargo. Yeah, on the on the ride home, and we've driven around a little. Driven around a little bit on the ride home, we probably went a good five minutes without seeing any other cars on the road. And that was at 930. Yeah. So I don't know if it's the cold keeping people indoors or if it's just Fargo. But in any case, it's a bit of a ghost town here at the moment, despite the fact that Mm -hmm. I think we've got the biggest game of the college football season in this town. (laughs) Of the season. Yeah, it's true. Cold game. In in about 13 hours, as you said. Yeah. um, you know, I don't know if everyone is just tucking in early to be prepared mentally, mm-hmm. but so that's impression number one, which I'd see as a positive. I love a, a, no, that's a nice fine. sleepy that's, town. Listen, we're yeah. old heads at this point. Yeah. Uh, impression two is that it's very cold, but I think we've already covered yeah, that that's point. That's fine. That's to be expected. Uh, impression three, it's very quaint. Yeah. It's extremely quaint. And, um, it just sort of seems like a small college town to me. It's, it's a very small town, Yeah, but it's, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, it is not, uh, you know, there are no. I, apparently, the wood chipper is around. I said, like the Fargo at Chamber the of Commerce Center. or Visitor Center. Yeah, yeah, it's not like bleak and you know ominous here. No, it's just not very crowded, and um, you know, very very quaint. It's a small college town. It just seems like I've been to many, and it seems like another one of them. And something I did notice when we were driving around, there has to be a business that installs lights atop other businesses <laughs> because every along the, the freeway there were probably seven or eight places that looked like strip clubs right but it was just a mattress store right. or it was just a pet hospital but they had the lighting of strip clubs and it's disorienting but also shout out to whoever performed and pulled off that sales job there's of, a contractor here making bank it's on and, and they're not like holiday lights they're not christmas lights they're not whatever they are permanent fixtures, and it's very confusing. <laughs> like all of a sudden, I think I'm in Tampa or something, the Tampa of the well, Upper Plains, and where the where the buildings are positioned mm-hmm. too. Yes, right next to the freeway. It's like you could go either way on whether or not yeah. it's uh, you know an eatery or a different kind of establishment. Yeah. So those are our early impressions of Fargo. It is to- like I I'm looking forward to, and this is not, no slight on. I'm first of all, I'm looking forward to the game like crazy. Oh, yeah. I haven't been to a college football game since Oregon, Ohio State, the national championship game. Has it been so, that long? 2015, the very, very beginning of 2015, like early oh, January wow. 2015. I so don't know if I've we're been almost going on four years now. Well, because of the show, it's hard. Because it, of the show, it's hard to go to games. Yes, because of work. Yeah, all sorts of things. Yeah. I mean, actual game, it's probably been longer for me. You haven't been to Penn State or Notre Dame or Mm-mm. any of that? No, it's been a long time. I'm excited that it's a, a game at the Fargo Dome, which oh, you yeah. didn't even realize that NDSU no, full, had a dome. Full disclosure. Yeah, that's okay. Full disclosure. When you said on the show about the Fargo Dome. Yeah. 
I just assumed it was like that Patriot League gag. We yeah, had a couple yeah, the years Tokyo ago Dome. Yeah. We were talking about, you know, Lehigh playing Georgetown in the Tokyo Dome the, or st- Stadium Azteca. The, what's, what's the one in London? Is the O2 Arena? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. right. So I just assumed this was another one of your gags. No. Um, but then Kevin Brown, mm-hmm. not the Dodger pitcher, but right. the announcer, he, he said the Fargo Dome as well. Mm-hmm. And so I wasn't sure if this was just like, a widespread joke that I it's hadn't been Googleable. cut. You know? No, <laughs> it wasn't until this week that I Googled it. Right. And I sent to you on the super secret G chat mm-hmm. that in fact, oh, damn, they do have a dome. Mm-hmm. That's cool. That's very cool. Yeah. It seats what, about 20,000? I think I think stadium com- or, uh, concert capacity, excuse me, is 24,000 I saw, but it looks like the, the football team gets about 18 per game. 18-ish, okay. Which is a good crowd. For it's an FCS? Crowd. It's a yeah. huge crowd. We were hearing tonight during curling that people will come up to the head coach, Chris Kleiman of NDSU football in like currently, the supermarket. Currently. As we speak today right. on Friday night, the current one, he's rumored to be in the mix for the Kansas state head coaching job that people will come up to him. Like good luck this season. We're saving up for tickets for Frisco. So we probably won't see you in person until then. It's it's assuming a lot. Frisco, by the way, is where they play the championship, the national game. championship. Yeah, yeah. Every year in Texas. So no pressure, Bison. Um, Look past the Raiders at your own risk is all I'm saying. This is the second straight week now where an opposing head coach is rumored On to the go verge. to. Yeah, new school. job. So it is, we've been up for a long time. We've been up, so what, it's 10.15. We've been up since about, what, 3.15 our body time, central time? I don't even know. I need to import some footage. I need to sync up some audio and video. Uh, I need to sort of figure out what I want to do tomorrow. We have the meetup tomorrow night. Tomorrow's another long day. I am I'm excited. I'm going to get some green tea too. Myself. You should. You should. So while we're out here, mm-hmm. we are pleased to remind you about our friends at The Athletic. Oh, please. Who have so graciously decided that they wanted to sponsor some of this madness again, Dan. Mm-hmm. So please do if you're interested. It's not too late. Of course, we've got the bowl season now. We've got the playoffs. They're going to start at the end of the month, the national championship, which I think we know is going to be Notre Dame versus uh, maybe. Yeah, I saw you guys have special new uniforms, right? I don't even want to jinx this. Looking real handsome. I was trying to be coy here. It's late. I'm tired. The The Athletic. some Under Armour boys? Is that what you guys are now? That's right. That's right. Theathletic.com slash solid verbal. We just actually had tweets coming in this week from people Mm -hmm. who cashed in on the deal, and they're very pleased with it. It's a great product. No frills. It's the future of journalism, as you've said time and time and again, Dan. Yeah. Theathletic.com slash solid verbal. You get 40% off your very first year. Buy it for yourself as a Christmas present. Buy it for others as a Christmas present or a holiday present. Whatever you're into this December, theathletic.com slash solid verbal is a good idea. Again, 40% off your very first year. That's a great deal. And by the way, if you want to stop the show right now, and go grab it. It's like two ninety nine a month or something, just obscenely good rate wise. Uh, we're still in the coaching carousel time. That's right. And Bruce Feldman, our pal Bruce, has been doing a, an incredible job tracking everything As during the coaching search, yep. and can only find that stuff on the Athletic. And you can only find our deal at theathletic.com slash solid verbal. So come on, no brainer. You you heard the man. Okay, so you got to import footage. Mm-hmm. I'm going to import this audio, and. Uh, get ourselves positioned for the next couple <laughs> captain's logs that we enter here Yes, on our trip to Fargo tomorrow, our trip back to Minneapolis to meet some of our ballers and then eventually back home to the East coast. But in the meantime, we're going to, we're going to do what we got to do. We're going to get some rest and we'll, we'll catch you on the flip side. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. Saturday. 5.04 in the evening. Somewhere between Minneapolis and Fargo. Again. All right. We are, we are back. We are on the road again. We are. And we are no longer virgins to the North Dakota State football first-person viewing experience at the Fargo Dome. I was really hoping you went in that direction when you said we are no longer virgins. Um, this, is, this is my headline, and I tweeted this out almost verbatim. We went to the Fargo Dome, and it ruled so, so, so hard. And I, it's not just because... It was a crazy atmosphere and a really good team. It was unlike anything I've seen 
I heard the ventilation in there because the crowd was so quiet during the Bison's offensive possessions, which is what really good fans should do. But it was it was a different place. That was a different place. Hey, I keep I keep feeling like I want to say we came, we saw, we kicked its ass. But I don't I don't really know we what didn't that do means. anything. No, we did we did nothing except walk around and be yeah. mildly frozen and interview and talk to cool tailgaters who are also yeah. North Dakota State fans. But I, I said to you while we were there yeah. that I felt like it was part college football, part monster truck rally. Yeah, it was it was definitely a venue that seemed like a rodeo monster truck. It was a very structured rectangle. It wasn't like your standard uh, indoor stadium type dome, but everybody went nuts, man. Everybody was like, that's the show in town. And you got that sense. You really did. And so we saw a bunch of stuff in there that I'm sure we can talk through here as we're yeah. driving. We got two hours left yet Yeah, on the haul back from Fargo to Minneapolis. Um, but let's start here. Just a really, really subtle way of asserting dominance when the PA announcer comes on, starts talking about buying tickets to Frisco. (laughs) Reserve your tickets now. It might have even been for next year. It may have been for 2020. Yeah. Uh, But start, reserve your tickets now to Frisco, Texas, where of course, as we said yesterday, they play the national championship on the FCS level. Um, Sort of a rude thing to do when the team you're playing is just getting vaporized. So at a certain point, we're just talking about facts. Right. Facts at a certain all. point, we're just talking about the fact that they've won five of six or six of seven national championships. And it just makes good sense that there is a good chance, no matter what happens, I haven't seen anything with Chris Kleiman and the Kansas State job since we started. No matter what happens with that, it's just good sense to plan ahead, as we all know. So when I tweeted that out, that it was sort of an insult. I didn't really think it was. And people were like, no, that's just what people do. <laughs> because that's like an annual trip. It's like what parent heads do. They go on the Jimmy Buffett cruise. <laughs> what North Dakota <laughs> State fans do is they go to Texas early on in January. So you might as well plan. Might as well plan. Yeah. Uh, my that's, un- what, that's what they're called, parent heads, right? Uh, Jimmy I, Buffett fans. I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe so. Uh, my other takeaway from the Fargo Dome is um, it's really freaking loud in there, but yeah. only when it wants to be. Right, yeah, that's what we were saying, yeah. You mentioned it a few minutes ago. Only when it wants to be. When Colgate was on offense, that place was like a Metallica concert. Yeah. When North Dakota State was on offense, you could hear a pin drop. You could hear the mm-hmm. ventilation system. You could. At the roof. Um, you very, could propose to somebody across the stadium. A very, very respectful fan base, I would say. Yeah, it was, first of all, we spent almost more time, the tailgating was probably more interesting than the game itself, which was never really competitive. I think it was 7-0 after the first quarter, and it was just, we got to see a crock-potting. We got to see maybe the crock-potting of 2018 in person, which feels a bit right, considering that we celebrate the sensation of crock-potting. It was uh, was really fun to tailgate. It was probably about 10 degrees. We layered up, we complained minimally. I think our hands hurt for a little while. Your feet were giving you a little trouble. I mean, it was fine. It It was was cold, you know, that's what happens. But what happens is people tailgate all the same in proportion. If you go to Alabama, there's 100,000 people. I'm sure there's a healthy proportion of people that tailgate. Same here, less than usual because of the weather for sure. But it's tailgating in North Dakota State is the same as tailgating anywhere else. The people are the same, the food is the same, the attitude is the same, the good times and friendships are the same. Except they do it inside of tents with rocket engine heaters <laughs> that outside is 10 degrees, inside is 83. It changes very quickly, but we had a lot of bacon and sausage and like there were cupcakes available, a lot of apple cider and cocoa. So it was it was really cool to see because I had no idea. It's a, The adaptation is really inspiring to witness. Yeah. It's like how wolves adapted to be friendlier with humans because mm-hmm. they were providing them with food right back in the in that in the day uh, the infrastructure that some of these fans have clearly invested in yeah 
is is incredible. I would also add to your point about tents. I saw more North Dakota State themed buses yes. at this tailgate yeah. than I think I'm accustomed to seeing. Yep. I haven't been as many places as you, but it feels like the buses per capita. Um, yeah, and like the was reclaimed it, school buses. Right, like is there a bus graveyard somewhere up here where they can get these things for 10 cents on the dollar? Yeah, I imagine. Well, listen, they're not. Listen, listen. They're not doing this for any other teams. Like, I don't think they're also Twins fans on this level that they are North Dakota State fans. I don't think they are. You know, I, I think the year is built around this in the way that it's true elsewhere, obviously, especially in the South. And you'll see a lot of those buses and setups like there, like that as well. But yeah, when you have, and this team is the best. This team is Alabama. This team is beyond Alabama. I mean, what Alabama does against the competition is sort of unprecedented on that level. But in terms of the sport, short of like the crazy, I don't, I, I don't know how it compares to like Mount Union and Wisconsin Whitewater on D3. But this is, I mean, North Dakota State is beating, they are beating power five schools so they're a lot closer than perhaps some of those dynasties i almost thought watching the game because colgate is a very good but definitely not great fcs team they certainly flawed one because of their offense and watching north dakota state who at at times looks like just like an average power five school dismantle them it made me wonder if people get bored yeah. <laughs> going to North Dakota State games because I don't know how many are actually competitive. Granted, we went and saw a 35-0 game that was particularly not competitive. That was the final score, right? Yeah. It was 35 nothing. But I wonder if you should add like a Harlem Globetrotter element to it because <laughs> you go see the Harlem Globetrotters, you know who's winning. Right. You know that the Washington Generals... You go to Generals, see the tricks, you're not going to see the score. Right. So what I'm saying is you add one crooked ref just totally and clearly Donaghying out there. You add a couple of players, mandatory players, to North Dakota's starting 22 that are non-English speaking, non-football familiar people who will certainly affect the game. Your left guard is 5'3", 118. You have to give them some sort of, in the way that golf has a handicap, something along those lines. You also need to borrow a page from the old 24 handbook. Okay. You need a good mole. You need an absolute mole. You need a mole. You need a, a, a pre-installed wakey leaks. Right. Something, some some like fly in the ointment Yeah. that can serve, on, serve as a distraction on a couple different fronts. And I think that might be it. Okay. We were talking about this earlier and this, I'm, I'm going to switch it up a little. We were talking yeah. about which power five school you would definitively take the, or give the points 14, 14 and a half points right. over North Dakota State playing on the Vikings field. On so the Vi- U.S. Bank Stadium. U.S. Bank Stadium, not the uh, not the Fargo Dome to have that true home field advantage, but a relative indoor neutral home field advantage. Yeah. And I, I want to add a little wrinkle to that. Okay. See, I almost think the question needs to be playing in the Fargo Dome because right. as we tweeted out, it's such an enormous home field advantage, certainly on the FCS level where they're yeah. used to playing in front of like, gosh, two to 5,000 people. Right. The Fargo Dome holds, I think it's max capacity is 24, but for football games, they pull down about 18. Colgate coming in there has to be wide eyed mm-hmm. and a little bit terrified. Oh my gosh. And I don't know if it's all that different for other schools going in there. Um, certainly a school like, I don't know, I'll just say Notre Dame, right? Notre Dame is used to playing in front of a lot of people, but maybe not playing in a place like the Fargo Dome, which is so unique. Yeah, I think your Dakota schools, your Northern Iowa, who play in domes and have played in the Fargo Dome often, get the drill. Right. But Colgate? Here's here's my question specific about Colgate or any other, like, Northeastern power or a power like Sam. I don't think Sam used to say, I don't know if they've ever come to the Fargo Dome. Maybe I'm wrong, but somewhere that's distant and definitively at a disadvantage talent-wise, coaching-wise, and now environment-wise. If North Dakota State, by law of the FCS playoffs, the NCAA, had to send Colgate every second of their offensive meetings this week, filmed, there was a camera in their offensive meetings. This is what we're doing in this situation. That's right. That's this, right. These are the plays we're installing. These are the practice cut-ups from like where it was strong and where it wasn't strong. 
if they were forced to deliver the entire offensive game plan with video evidence to Colgate as it was happening, like a live stream, does it ultimately change the outcome in any sort of dramatic way? I mean, if Colgate is ready <laughs> for everything, it's all there. Like they know no sequence what's going to happen. They know the sequence, they know the first however many plays on the script, they know what they've installed for the red zone, they know what every formation looks like, they know out of which personnel package they're running this type of play, they know the calls, they know the signals. Everything is fully telegraphed. The quarterback might as well tell the defense, "Wow, this is what we're running here. This is what, you know. So you're really expanding upon the whole mole premise. Yes. That, that is what triggered that in my mind. Do you think 35 nothing becomes a competitive game? Do you think Colgate wins? Do you think, at best, it's 35-20? I mean, well, first off, you're not telling Colgate what... North Dakota State's doing on defense, which Correct. is actually the bigger problem. It's a bigger problem. So I don't think it changes the outcome. Maybe North Dakota State. Uh, I mean, they force 20. a turnover. They force, you know, they, they force maybe an they win by twenty-eight. And... But the, the wow. problem, the problem with the game that we saw was yeah. that it really was not competitive. The better team was North Dakota State. Yeah. Um, and I think it starts up front with their defensive line we're not going to do any deep analysis here but yeah um colgate was just so overmatched on the offensive side of the ball yeah. going up against that defensive line so even if they knew even everything that the bison were going to do was telegraphed i don't think it right. made much difference yeah i i think they probably score a couple times i think they force turnovers but don't convert in the red zone because you're right the big problem for colgate was it took a superhuman effort from their defense this season to become a top 10 ranked MCS team right? to overcome the fact that their passing game just didn't really exist against the better teams on their schedule. I know they, they, they had some nice passes last week against James Madison, but it was, it was a non-starter. So let me, let me ask you this. Cause yeah. we're kind of getting to this. We were talking about this in the bagel shop yeah. before we hopped in the car to make this journey back to Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. 14 and a half points is your yeah. hypothetical spread. Yeah. I'm going to say we're playing the game in the Fargo Dome. In the Fargo Dome. In okay. the Fargo Dome. Which is both different and less daunting. A smaller crowd, but louder in, in some cases than a lot right. of opponents on the road. So let's go through Big Ten teams. Okay. And you tell me who you would take to cover yeah. 14 and a half in the Fargo Dome. Okay. We'll start easy. Would you take Michigan and Ohio State? Yes, Michigan and Ohio State are at least two touchdowns better in the Fargo Dome. In the Fargo Dome. Than the Bison, yes. Penn State. Penn State had trouble with App State this year. Well, App State's, I would take... And that App, game was in Beaver Stadium. App State's legitimately good. I don't, I don't think you can look at App State and say, I mean, they're the Sun Belt champs. You can't look at App State and say, like, could you imagine struggling against App State? Like, no, they're good. Um, Penn State struggled with Rutgers. I think that would be the more apt <laughs> example of Penn State looking flat against a team that doesn't have the talent of Penn State. Would I take Penn State to cover on the road? Yes. I think I would. Eventually, they win that game because of the line play and because of players like Miles Sanders and K.J. Hamler, who even if the offense is not rolling like it should be with Trace McSorley, they can turn 8 into 88. Yes. Michigan State. No. No. Why Michi not? Michigan State definitively does something extremely poorly, and that's play offense. And I think that would be their undoing. I mu- I would definitely take those points, if not take like the money line. The money you would go money line. Yeah, I think North Dakota State could one hundred percent upset Michigan State. Wow. Yeah. In the Fargo Dome? Yes, absolutely. Michigan State feels like a team that wouldn't take them seriously. Michigan State could shut them down, but I think North Dakota State could definitely win that game 13 to 10 for sure. So would you, I'd be inclined then to put along that same line of thinking, Northwestern. Didn't Michigan same, State barely get by Rutgers at the end of the year? They did. That's yeah. true. That's, that's true. the most recent example. Yeah. Northwestern played in the Big Ten championship game. Yeah. This is a good one. But, but kind of has like a fatal flaw every game somehow. Right. Like whether it's Clayton Thorson turning the ball over four or five times. Yep. Whether it's well, it's usually not the defense. The defense has been reasonably solid on yeah. the FBS level, but um, offensively, going into a strange place, 
I guess it's not too, too far of a yeah. trip for Northwestern, but I, I, they probably win. I don't know if they cover 14 and a half, though. You know, right. don't like that. By the way, it, this is all to be clear. North Dakota State has an NFL caliber quarterback once again. He is on draft boards. He's not like, I don't think he's a higher round pick like Carson Wentz was, but Easton Stick. Yeah, yeah I was going to say you're burying the lead that his name is Easton Stick. Easton Stick. Could he be a longtime Chase Daniel esque backup in the NFL with some health luck? Absolutely. He throws a nice ball and he's, he's good size. Yeah. The, the fact that Chase Daniel was still a Chase Daniel ish backup is yeah. probably probably evidence enough for Easton Stick. So Northwestern to get back to the the main road. Yes. Um, I probably would not. Northwestern is a team that plays up and plays down, and I would take Northwestern to win, but I I would have them winning twenty four to twenty something like that. List for me the teams that in the Fargo Dome outside of Michigan State. Yeah. North Dakota State would beat. Would beat outright. Yeah. In the Big Ten or any any conference. In just any just do Big Tens. Um, we know they could beat Oregon, but how dare you? Big Ten. In the Big Ten, North Dakota State could outright beat Rutgers. Yes. In the Fargo Dome, I think they could outright beat Maryland. Even though the best of Maryland should beat the you know the average of North Dakota State, the best of Maryland is not something we always saw. I think they could beat that Maryland team, especially with injuries at quarterback. I think. They could beat Minnesota, even though the Minnesota defense did improve by the end of the year. Uh, they could beat Illinois. Illinois actually scares me a little bit because of how well they ran the ball. I think they could control a little bit on the ground, but they, I think they could beat Illinois for sure. Um, they could beat Purdue, but I I would probably lean towards giving those points with Purdue, just because they themselves have a good quarterback and some game changes on offense. I think North Dakota State could beat outright. I don't feel good about Nebraska. I mean, I, and to say that I feel good about Nebraska winning, I don't feel good about beating Nebraska. Who else am I missing right now? Indiana? Indiana. They could beat Indiana. Uh, North Dakota State has recently competed well with Iowa, so... right. Yeah, we saw some ugliness from that I mean, this Iowa offense this year. So anyway, the point here, yeah, I think the larger point is that North Dakota State is a maybe below average right now Big Ten team, but yes. they're hovering within average. Right, like they could the get bowl eligible. Ten. Yes, is what it amounts to. Um, incredible venue for a game. Yeah, definitely a bucket list trip to come up and check this out. It is different, though, and it's different in this respect because I don't know if it's because I know in the back of my mind that it's FCS football as opposed to FBS. Right. Uh, I don't know if it's because it's that FCS team playing in a really cool and, by comparison, giant venue like the Fargo Dome. I don't know what yeah. it is, but there is part of me that felt like I went to a different planet. For sure. Watching this game, and it, it occupies the space between really big time Texas high school football and like middle tier Big Ten football. It feels to me wow mentally like it like it it's just somewhere in there and I don't quite know how and I don't mean that as any disrespect. I'm sure it'll come across that way. Yeah. But um it's just such an odd setting to see a whole town rally around an FCS school. That's not something I've seen. No, in the Northeast it's most certainly not like that in you know, in the South, there are certainly pockets that appreciate and support FCS schools, rightfully so. But there, this is there are 125,000 people live in Fargo, and a lot of the towns in the South and Texas are, are much smaller that have FCS schools. So, no, it's a unique experience. It's a unique uh, destination for sure. And yeah, I, I would say North Dakota State is like a good MAC team, a pretty good MAC team. Yeah, and. I came away just crazy impressed with the experience. And I almost have to wonder at what point, and, and I don't know different conference qualifications because then you start getting into academics and, you know, you have to, North Dakota State's not going to join the Big Ten. But 
when you win eight of nine, when you win 10 of 11 or 12 of 15, when do we have to say North Dakota State should be the Mountain West? Like that, that has to be like, at a, in a not so distant time, that conversation has to be had if it continues with, and it's very difficult because Chris Kleiman's going to be hired by somebody in the way that Craig Bull was at Wyoming. Right. If they keep it going with whoever's next, if it's a current coach at the school or they hire from the outside, North Dakota's North Dakota State's infrastructure is such where they can support a Mountain West team. Yeah. And the conversation has to be had. Why are they still playing on this level? Well, and, and the point here is, I think, even if their coach leaves, yeah, it might be that they've gotten to the point where the the program is it's almost a critical mass, yeah, right? Because they've got such an infrastructure advantage having that as their home stadium. Yep, they can probably uh, afford to throw a little bit more into their football program than a lot of their rivals because they have that and they need to continue that tradition. Right. Um, I also think they are, and it's part of it. I don't think it's a main part of it, but it's part of it. I think they're kind of secretly in a very good location. It's very strange to say that about North Dakota, but they're in a good-sized college town. Cold, mind you, but that's okay because a good chunk of their roster is either from North Dakota, Minnesota, or Wisconsin. And the the high school level of football and the high school participation of football in Minnesota and Wisconsin, I think is sort of under-talked about, where they can pretty much get any, this is without any research, you're talking to any experts, mind you, (laughs) It seems like they could probably, at this point, in the way Alabama can do it throughout the South, get any fringe FBS player they want, if, if they're undersized, if they're late bloomers, whatever, from Wisconsin or Minnesota, that Upper Plains area, they're the show. Yeah. And they have that advantage over a school like Colgate, which, all respect to Hamilton, New York, and surrounding areas, right. this is not an area of the country that has a, t- a big pool to choose from. So North Dakota State in that way has a has a nice advantage. You know what just dawned on me? What? Did you happen to see the signs saying I prefer Crest? Yeah, they're making fun of Colgate. It yeah. just dawned on me that they're yeah. comparing Colgate to toothpaste. Yes. Yep. In the car several hours after the game. Yeah. No, you were focused on many other things. And that's acceptable. Damn. I'm okay with it. But yeah, I would recommend because we get a lot of these emails. And it's off the beaten path for sure. People ask, should, where should I go? I've never been to a game. I live in Australia. I'm coming to the States. Should I go see Texas or should I go see Alabama? Something yeah, to, like that. To be fair, if you're coming from Australia, don't don't make Fargo your first don't stop. Don't make it the first one. Don't make it the first one. But if you've been around and you want somewhere new and different, go to a big game at the Fargo Dome. In like... <laughs> late October. Late October. Yes. At the at the absolute latest. Because well, you're still getting it's, it'll be crisp. It'll be like the 30s or something, probably 40s. Right. I I do recommend it. I had a great time. The people were terrific. The atmosphere was great. It was. We went curling. We ate burgers. We layered up. We wandered around tailgates. We got to see the end of the Patriot League football season. We did. I got to see a clip of me curling on the game broadcast yes. with Cole Kublik and DJ Shockley, which it's very strange to say that I went curling with DJ Shockley yep. and Cole Kublik, but I mean, mostly DJ Shockley. <laughs> I could and I could anticipate, I could have anticipated a world in which I went curling with a former offensive lineman, but DJ right. Shockley a little different, just great quarterback for Georgia. So I uh, the, the, the trip came together last minute. And I regret nothing, and I encourage everybody to follow our decision making and just just go for it. Take chances. Be be spontaneous. Live your best life, Dan. Live your best this life. This is turning into an advice show here. It is turning into an advice show. We're in the middle of Minnesota. It wasn't. We passed Alexandria, Minnesota, not too long ago. Yep. And Still very flat. Yeah, it's getting foggy. That has not changed. It is foggy. Which is a new wrinkle. We keep passing icy bodies of water. Right. But we have the meetup in a little bit, in about four hours, in Minneapolis. We check into our hotel, eat some dinner. And I think Ty is going to do some independent research on Fargo in North Dakota. I'm very curious about Fargo, North Dakota. Ty is borderline becoming obsessed with, like, 
Why do people move to Fargo? Why do people leave Fargo? Why do people start businesses in Fargo? Why don't they start businesses in Fargo? Why don't they? I, I want to know. I want to know the official pitch. Yeah. From the Fargo Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. To prospective business clients who might want to bring their operations yeah. inside the city limits. And I mean that not again in any derogatory way. I'm genuinely curious about how this works. Yeah. It was. Uh, I got questions after this trip. It was an it was an interesting place that is extremely far away from most places I've been. So what I would add as we sort of wrap up here a little bit. Yeah. Um, big thanks first and foremost to our friend Kevin Brown from ESPN. Yeah, planting the seed. Who planted the seed? You know, I guess we kind of planted it a little bit, but he took it and he he, he watered that seed yeah. and and gave it sprouts. Yep. To the point where we thought, hey, what the hell? Let's do it. So, Kevin, a really good dude. It was great to meet him for the first time. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure he did a magnificent job of the broadcast. If you listen to his intro to the broadcast, mm-hmm. there were a bunch of little Easter eggs in there for solid ballers. Yeah. <laughs> who might have been watching, wondering, what is this game all about? So, good dude. Big thanks to him. Would you say we're influencing the influencers? Ooh. It's not my phrase, but I think we... We're, we have a good case. We could to use say. that. We could use that. Yeah. Um, shout out once again to uh, Open Floor Globe. But I, uh, Kevin Brown, up and comer. Yeah. Pay attention. Listen, we made Adam a meme. Listen. Listen. We made Adam a meme. That's a joke. We can make Kevin Brown. We are secret kingmakers of play by play broadcasters. And Kevin we, Brown, thank you. Yeah. Um, also, big thanks to uh, everyone in North Dakota State. Oh, for, terrific. on very short notice, kind of giving us, uh, you know, uh, our, our lay of the land here. Yeah. Uh, driving their credentials to our hotel. Yeah. Which is, Super believe nice. me, not something that normally not happens. very common. Um, and, you know, big thanks to all of the fans who kind of opened uh, their tailgates up to us, welcomed us in. Yeah. Uh, thank you for helping keep us warm throughout this because it was very cold. What was the best thing you ate at a tailgate? What was that bacon? The uh, whiskey cayenne bacon. Brown sugar. Yeah. Oh. Some some guy made some sort of slurry with whiskey or bourbon and cayenne pepper for spice and brown sugar. Yeah. For, that was the best bacon I've ever had. Drizzled it over life. the bacon before bacon it. Yeah. It was excellent bacon. I I don't know what the best thing I had was. It might have been that bacon. It probably was that bacon. But we had meatballs and sausage and we did do a jello shot because we didn't want to be rude. Right. And I, I think we had a little bit of breakfast burrito. It was good food. It's tough in the morning. It's tough in the morning. It was an 11 a.m. local kick to throw together a tailgate, especially when nobody really wants to be outside manning the grill. A lot yeah. of sausages yeah. around the uh, the parking lot. All right, Dan. Um, so now we're off to Minneapolis. Yeah. For our next trick, we're going to meet some verballers. Yes. At Surly Brewing Company. Yep. I recognize when people listen to this, they will not be able to too late. adjust their plans and uh, meet up with us. But nonetheless, that's where we're headed yeah. a little bit later on this evening to meet some Minneapolis for ballers and people St. Paul the, for ballers. Yeah, from the greater Minneapolis area, uh, which is always fun for us yeah. to go out and uh, meet some of the people that support the show. So that'll be fun. And then we fly back to reality early tomorrow morning. Very early tomorrow. I didn't tell you this, but I think we're going to be departing from the airport in two different cabs. Whoa. Yeah. I think I'm meeting Jody with an eye for brunch. Pre-existing reservation. Whoa. Okay. So it's going to, it, this trip is going to end before you thought it was going to. It's okay. It's okay. But. We're used to this life, Dan. Yeah, we are indeed. So it, I huge success. Could not categorize it as anything less than a huge success. This was... If it's not my first FCS football uh, attendance, I can't think of what was. And other than the fact that the game was in no way competitive beyond the first quarter, I I graded an A. It was it was a great time. And again, recommend it to all. Go support the the, the Bison and dominance. It's it's your duty. Alrighty, Dan. I think that's all I got. Um... I don't know if we do the normal outro here, being so we are in a moving vehicle. Right. But it's been a fun trip. We appreciate everybody who uh, who has sort of joined us spiritually. Yeah. Um, 
We're yeah. driving into the fog. This oh. might be the last recorded evidence of our existence. They're, they're going to find this yeah. in a fiery crash. Uh, but no, thanks to everyone who supported it, who played along with all of our fun. We'll catch you all in a few days. In the meantime, stay solid. Peace.